Hey guys, welcome back. Another episode with the Porsche 911 suspension rebuild project. And yes, we have finally moved to the rear of the car. I'm Benny Obscene and this is my 1977 Porsche 911. I pulled this car out of a crusty old garage where it sat neglected for decades. After plenty of wrenching to get it running and driving, a head-on collision with a deer took out the whole front end. I'm finally back in business, but there's just one problem. It's overdue for everything. Now that the front's done, I'm happy with that piece. And with the rear, just a real simple job. Originally, I wanted to replace just the bushings on the spring plate, but after researching how hard it is to get these off, and with the current condition of my existing spring plates, it just made more sense to pick up these units from Renline themselves. So these are brand new, fully adjustable spring plates. I didn't get the easy adjust ones because I don't really make height adjustments that often on these but these are obviously gorgeous, ready to go on the car, and all I need to do is get the old ones off. Before I do anything else though, I wanna get this red brake caliper off. I can't stand red brake calipers, and they obviously don't match the car at all anymore. Funny story about the brakes on this car though. The day I bought the car and was driving home, I was in a little bit of traffic. Come on. And there was a situation where I actually had to come to a pretty quick stop. And I go to hit the brakes and they're not really there. Ow. So I end up just stomping on the thing as hard as I can. Brakes completely lock up. And here I am skidding my brand new Porsche 911 almost into the back of the car in front of me. So I finally get home and take a look at these things. The All the rubber brake lines in the car are just completely gone. They are cracked, corroded, just completely ancient and obviously not functioning at all. So the very first thing I did on this car was actually replace all the brake lines and do a proper fluid flush and bleed. Now that we got the caliper out of the way, you can clearly see the condition of the existing spring plate and right here the primary reason why I'm doing this job, as you can see, the bushings here are toast. This is supposed to be an even gap all the way around, but you can see since the bushing has all but collapsed, it's riding pretty much on the metal part of the spring plate here, which is no bueno. So the first step in freeing the spring plate, these four nuts and bolts right here, let's get to work. This job is also the perfect excuse to whip out my brand new tool. This was a little birthday present for myself, but yeah, I've wanted one of these since forever. The awesome part with these, as you can hear, it acts like a regular ratchet. So if you got something that's a little bit tough, and then as soon as you get it loose, you zap it right off. And then important note, just be careful when you're working around the spring plates here. This stuff is under pressure. Uh, so as soon as you start popping these bolts out, things are gonna become unsprung and possibly hit you in the face. So those, those eight bolts normally take me like at least a half hour or so just because they're so hard and the threads are so long this thing is awesome highly recommend it there's a reason why they're sold out everywhere freaking awesome and so as awesome as that is here's the not awesome part of this project 
getting the spring plate out, getting it disconnected from the torsion bar, which most likely a lot of these torsion bars have been crammed in there for 40 plus years. It's another one of those things that kind of builds up some corrosion and just fuses together and they're impossible. So a lot of times they'll release from the inside and not from this part and that's not a good time. Now I'm hoping that this will be okay because I have had these off and I've re-indexed them several times to adjust the ride height. So keep your fingers crossed. One of the tricks I think is doing a little wiggle like that. So I'm just going to gently kind of wiggle this around from different different sides and hopefully that kind of helps release the torsion bar. Uh, and nope. So this is basically exactly what you want not to happen. This is, that's the torsion bar right there. And again, it's, it has splines on both ends. One side goes into the torsion tube and the other side connects on the spring plate here. And so you can see, as I've pulled the spring plate away, it released the torsion bar on the inside of the torsion tube. Now the problem becomes, you can't get this out, it's stuck. There's not enough room between the fender and the inner fender. So the only way to get this spring plate out is to get it disconnected from the torsion bar inside here. This thing's covered in grease, it's round, there's nothing good to grab onto. So you can sometimes get some vice grips on there and just kind of work it back and forth. The other option is you drill this guy out and then just kind of ram it apart. Option number three, which I hope it doesn't come to this, angle grinder, cut this bad boy out. Peace, see you later. Okay, this episode of Benny Obscene brought to you by Propane Torch. If your shit's stuck, light it on fire. We got it out. The spring plate is out. The torsion bar is out. What I ended up kind of going full on at it for a little bit. Uh, and ultimately what I had to do is bust the cover off of the spring plate, hit that with just tons and tons of fire spray some PB Blaster in there, and ultimately um, I took a uh, half-inch extension, whacked it with a big-ass hammer, and eventually it came loose. Okay, so real quick, while I've got these on the bench, I didn't do a very good job of explaining how you actually hammer the torsion bar out. So here is the spring plate. This is the little piece that kind of comes out the side, and normally they've got this little cap on top. Right there, you can see I, I drill out a hole that's kind of off to the side a little bit, so you try to avoid damaging the torsion bar. But that's the little hole that you drill out. And then once you get that drilled, you wedge your screwdriver in there, pry the thing off, and that's what exposes the torsion bar to get hammered out. So you'll see that the torsion bar will be in there. Spray your PB blaster around here. Put the flame all around here, and then using something like this extension, pop it up against the torsion bar, and whack away with your big ass hammer. Hope that helps. Didn't film, because I got way too intense. You get the idea. Uh, I wouldn't wish that on anybody anyway. So definitely don't do that at home, but it's out. And we have the rear suspension now as disassembled as I'm planning to do, at least at this stage of the game. So up next, we'll put everything back together with the brand new spring plates, the brand new bushings, and then go ahead and adjust at least a little bit the, uh, the rear alignment just to get it safely to the alignment shop. Thank you for watching. Got probably one more, then we're back on the road. See you next time.